Welcome back, Commander. Your vital signs are stable, and you are showing no ill effects from your cryostasis. Be advised. You will experience some nausea from the prolonged hibernation, but this should subside within 5 to 10 minutes. Please make use of the medical room if required. Oh, I feel like crap. Thanks, Ben. I'm making my way there now. I can confirm that we have successfully arrived in the Proxima Centauri system. Yay, we made it! But we do have a situation at hand that requires your urgent attention. Really? Okay, Ben, give me a full report. Acknowledged, Commander. We successfully arrived within the outer regions of the Proxima Centauri star system three days, five hours and thirty-one minutes ago. I navigated the Icarus into a trajectory that would bring the ship into a stable orbit around Proxima Centauri and performed an initial scan of the star system, as per my instructions, before reviving the crew from stasis. Well, that sounds okay so far. It was during those initial scans that I detected an infrared signature that matched that of another vessel in a close what? orbit around the star of Proxima Centauri itself. No way. As per my instructions, I immediately revived Dr. Takahashi and informed him of this discovery. As you could imagine he was very excited, both at the fact we would arrived safely, and also that we were not alone. Unfortunately, shortly afterwards, I also had to revive Dr. Sarkar, as Dr. Takahashi lost balance and fell faint. But Dr. Sarkar diagnosed this as being a combination of overexcitement <laughs> and the effects of longer than usual hibernation in cryostasis. Well, it can be a little overwhelming, Ben. I mean, it looks like we're not only the first human beings to travel to another star system, but also the first humans in history to encounter an alien spaceship. Negative, Commander. As we approached, it became obvious from the transponder signal that the unknown vessel was of human origin. You have got to be kidding me. I calculated that there was a 98.7% chance that it had departed the South System and reached Proxima Centauri well before the Icarus arrived. How is that even possible? Dr. Takahashi, as you could imagine, did not take this news particularly well. No wonder. And his behavior became increasingly erratic. He ordered me to navigate the Icarus to within 5 kilometers of the unknown vessel and match its velocity and orbit around Proxima Centauri. Dr. Takahashi then left the Icarus, boarded the rescue ship with a protesting Dr. Sarkar in tow. He navigated it to the unknown vessel and appears to have gone on board. Oh, this just gets better and better. Dr. Takahashi isn't even qualified to fly the rescue ship. Ben. Is there any particular reason why I've only just been revived from hibernation now? As soon as that vessel was detected, I should have been woken up and informed about it. Apologies, Commander. Both Dr. Sarkar and I insisted that you were revived from cryostasis shortly after the unknown vessel was first discovered. Unfortunately, Dr. Takahashi overruled that decision. He wanted to wait until we got closer to the unknown vessel, as he was worried that if the ship proved to be extraterrestrial in origin, that you would have cited his ill health and assumed overall command of the mission. As our operational parameters clearly state that if there is any threat to the civilian crew or if the expedition leader is unfit to command, then the highest ranking military or security officer is authorized to assume overall command of the mission in order to safeguard the lives of all involved. The show's just being paranoid. I lost contact with doctors Sarkar and Takahashi shortly after they boarded the unknown vessel, and since they have not reported in, in over six hours, I have exercised my authority as the ship's AI to revive you from cryostasis, as I am worried about the safety of doctors Sarkar and Takahashi. Thanks, Ben. You did the right thing. Our spacesuits are designed to hold 8 hours worth of oxygen, so even if they were in a vacuum they have another 2 hours left. But chances are the other vessel does have some kind of life support, so they should be okay. Chances are Dr. Takahashi is involved in a deep scientific discussion with the captain of the other vessel. In the meantime, I will continue our mission as planned. I will launch one of the beacons that will relay our discoveries and information thus far back to Earth. And then once I'm satisfied everything's working correctly, I'll bring this vessel alongside the other ship, and then I'll just raise the other crew and see how everybody's getting on. Oh, I'm just hoping Sho hasn't started a fight over there. We could be making history for all the wrong reasons. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Ben, give me a status report, please. Acknowledged, Commander. All systems are operating within acceptable levels. Reactors 1 through 4 are all running at over 90% efficiency. The solar collectors were unfolded shortly after we arrived in system, and while they have taken minor damage, they are all operating at over 60%.
All antennas, sensors and communications systems are working perfectly and do not appear to have been damaged. That's brilliant. Thanks, Ben. The loss in efficiency on the solar panels, it's actually my fault. Uh, there is no damage done by high-speed atoms or micrometeorites. I still had the calibration set for a Type G yellow star, rather than the Type M red flare star we have here in Proxima Centauri, which produces a lot less light. I'll just change those settings in a few minutes, and hopefully our readings should be back to normal again. There we go, Ben. Beacon 1 is away. Affirmative, Commander. Beacon has been deployed. And there it goes, away in its merry journey into deepest space. Anyway, Benny boy, without further ado, let's have a look at our uninvited guest that has beaten us to Proxima Centauri. There we go, I'll just use the camera, zoom in, take a good look at it. Well, that is an ugly looking ship. Certainly not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. What are your thoughts, Ben? Curious. The vessel is clearly of human origin, but it does not conform to any known type or class in my database. There is a 91.4% chance that this vessel is a prototype. Yeah, that seems more than likely. There was one other vessel that was being built when we left the solar system, but it was at least eight years away from being completed. So if it is the same one, not only have they managed to finish building it, but it's also overtaken us. So that is an amazing feat of engineering. <laughs> I have to admit, it does kind of look a bit like a Romulan warbird, though. I'm sorry, Commander. I do not recognize Romulan warbird as being listed in my active ship database. It may be in need of updating. <laughs> Just ignore that, Ben. That's a reference to something completely unrelated to this. But what is bugging me, though, Ben, is that if you look at those spindly engine nacelles, those are standard thrusters that are mounted on it. Those are the same things that the Goliath, Artemis, and the Icarus use for intersystem travel, not for interstellar travel. And I'm certainly not reading any thermal signatures from the stern of the ship, so there's no engines back there. So I'm a little bit confused as to how this thing managed to overtake us. What are your thoughts, Ben? I agree, Commander. Based on initial observations, the thruster configuration in use by the unknown vessel appears to be significantly inferior to the Icarus. It is thus highly unlikely that the unknown vessel overtook us in our journey to Proxima Centauri and must have used another method of propulsion to have traveled here. Yeah, and that is the million dollar question. Exactly how did this thing manage to get here? Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that can't be right. These readings are all over the place. Ben, run a quick self-diagnostic on the sensor array, please. As you wish, Commander. Now running a diagnostics check on the sensor array. Diagnostics check on the sensor array has been completed and no faults have been detected. Hmm. Well, that's strange. According to these sensors, I'm getting thermal readings all over the ship, including the inside and outside. And that drive section's emitting slightly higher levels of radiation than I expected. It might be caused by the proximity to the star, but I'm not entirely sure. What are your thoughts, Ben? It looks like we've got some radiation from the stern of the vessel to deal with. I agree, Commander. I am detecting low levels of radiation being emitted by the drive section of the unknown vessel. The radiation is still within the limits of human tolerance, but prolonged exposure would be harmful without adequate protection. That's interesting. I thought a vessel this advanced would have much more efficient radiation shielding. Alright. I'm a little bit closer now, so I'll try and hail them. To the unidentified vessel in orbit around Proxima Centauri, this is the Takahashi Industries Deep Space Research Vessel ISS Icarus. Do you read me? Over. I say again, this is the ISS Icarus to the unknown vessel in orbit around Proxima Centauri. You have two of our crew members on board and I'm inquiring on their status. Please respond. Over. No, nothing. Ben, I'm not getting any response. Were there any previous attempts made at communicating with the unknown vessel? Affirmative, Commander. Dr. Takahashi tried earlier, but the unknown vessel has not responded to any previous attempts to hail them, despite using different frequencies. That's okay, Ben. It might just be that their long-range comms are down. I'll bring the Icarus up alongside the other vessel, and then I'll try getting in touch with Dr. Saker and Dr. Takahashi using our short-range communications. Let's try not to hit the rescue ship. Dr. Takahashi, this is Commander Robertson. Do you read me? Over. Dr. Sarkar, this is Commander Robertson aboard the Icarus. Do you read me? Over. Don't answer me all at once, guys. 
Dr. Takahashi, this is Commander Robertson aboard the Icarus. Do you read me? Please respond. Over. Come on, guys. Where are you? This is Commander Robertson aboard the ISS Icarus. Anyone on this frequency? Do you read me? Over. Well, I guess that settles it then. I'm not getting any response from the rest of the crew, so I've got no choice but to cross over to the other vessel and make sure that everything's okay. It might just be something as simple as the star being too close and causing too much interference, or maybe the radiation from the other ship's drive is affecting the radio signal, but until I go over there and investigate, I'll never know for sure. Now here's the problem. Dr. Sho Takahashi, in his infinite wisdom, commandeered the rescue ship. Which means I have to cross over to the other vessel using only my spacesuit. Normally that's not a problem, but right now we're pretty damn close to the star Proxima Centauri, which means that I'm at risk of being exposed to potentially hazardous levels of radiation if I'm not careful. So this will have to be one of the quickest spacewalks I've ever done. Here goes nothing. Commander, sensors show that radiation levels are still within acceptable limits. Glad to hear it, Ben. Just don't jinx it for me. Excellent. I've made it to the airlock. Now I've just got to get inside. Pressurizing and... Whoa! What the heck? Gravity? How? There's no rotating sections. How the heck do we have gravity here? Whoa. This ship's a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> 